Right, so today we got a 625i Gator, which is having some running complaints. And we already did some diag, but I'm going to walk you guys through the basics here. So first thing we're doing is we're checking out our two throttle position sensors. We have a standard mechanically operated throttle here. So we're checking that TPS first, output signal. And then we have a stepper motor operated e-throttle, it's called and this goes off of inputs here and changes a secondary throttle plate angle within that throttle body to keep this thing a lot more smooth with the acceleration and deceleration when you're bouncing around off-road and this pedals you know boom 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 smooths everything out so I just got these breakout leads in place and first thing we're doing is checking input voltage which is 4.98 and then we're going to switch over to wire 4 here, which is our output voltage, 1.03. And then we're going to cycle through 3.9, 1.03. And based off of our specs, input 4.75 to 5 and a quarter, 0.89, 3.81. So we're perfect there. So the next step was to go and do the same here, but all we were really checking was input voltage. So if I can do this one-handed, one there and one here. And 4.98. Now notice we're not going to be able to do a throttle position, throttle position sensor sweep test on this because it's controlled by the stepper motor. So let's kick over here and we're going to zoom out and we are going to do. All right, so we're hooked up. We're going to hit play here. And key on, engine off, and what we have here, let's go back one, is our key on engine off self test of the throttle body. So we have phase, how I've got these plugged in is oh, phase one, two, three, and four of the stepper motor. So it's key on, and then we're pulling the ground. One, two, three, four. We're staggered. So how that works, well, we'll get to how that works in a second. Let's fire it up. back a little bit uh, all right let's go into here where it was breaking up and we'll zoom in and believe it or not don't pay super attention to all this that's actually fairly normal on these they, they put a real crappy signal out um, some of them are better than this but it, it's not terrible but if you notice we have certain events where we're pulsed high or low longer than others we've got a lot of weird overlap we've got a section here which is basically the stepper motor trying to correct itself and it, it, it's just moving around it's going bad internally we got another one here another one there so We'll get into how that works after we swap the throttle body. So we got our nice shiny new throttle body in there. Um, I'm not the how to repair 
type video guy, but pretty simple. Two bolts there, pull it out. Slide your throttle plate off, nuts here, slide that back, double nut the studs, pull it all out, one assembly, 15, 20 minutes. You'll figure it out, it's not too bad. Anyway, this here is our throttle body. So you'll see, we've got a regular old standard throttle plate directly connected to a throttle position sensor, which is an input to the ECM. ECM on these machines looks at throttle position sensor, engine coolant temperature sensor, and map sensor to determine everything, including fuel injection timing. And then, when we go to the other side here, we have our secondary throttle, which is run by this stepper motor from input from the ECM that helps smooth out that airflow going through to give you a more consistent idle so you're not all herky-jerky bouncing around off-road. So just a little shaft there. Now why these start to go bad, I really couldn't tell you. I have not taken one of these apart. In fact, I really didn't know a whole lot about them other than the basics. I mean, most of us, when we test stepper motors, we're looking at stepper counts on a scan tool. This machine has an option on that instrument cluster that'll give you a flash code. Well, you guys heard how bad that thing was running before, and not so much as a single flash or anything else. So, anyway, what we got here is what's a six-wire stepper motor, but those two reds in the center are actually a center tap. They go to a coil on each side, and then it ends up going to becomes a five wire connector so I don't know if I've showed you guys the books yet I may have so what I do when I'm learning something new or not a hundred percent understanding is I go in one of my books and I start doing research so we broke it down based off of the schematic I had pin one two three four five they were labeled as SPM 1 3 12 volt input SPM 2 SPM 4 and this, from my research, was the, the closest I could find to an internal schematic. We have two coils with a shared center tap for 12 volt. And then we have each side here becomes its own phase of the motor. And then we have two ways of controlling them. So one, which is the common way for a unipolar uh, stepper motor, which is what we're dealing with here as far as I can tell. So phase one, green, phase two, blue, phase three, brown, and phase four, yellow. What it's gonna do is it's gonna ground phase one at first step one, then it grounds phase two, that gives it the next step, then three, then four. And then to go counterclockwise, you would just invert that. Then there's the other style where you would ground one and three at the same time, then two and three, then three and four, and then one and four. Oh, I'm sorry, two and four, and then one and four. You can see the diagram. So it'd work out to pin one, four, two, five, or pin five, two, four, one, or one, two, two, four, four, five, one, five, one, five, four, five, two, four, one, two. So that's just the order each one of these wires is being grounded at in this particular control situation. And then I just drew my scope in there just so I could color code it for when I'm doing it on the screen here. But this is one thing I love doing. I love, you know, if I'm trying to figure something out, I'm working through it. I just get these little computation books. I probably have 50 or 75 of these full up now, but Oops, sorry about that. Great way to work through stuff. So, real quick, notice here how two of our phases are 12 volt or battery voltage at the time when it's running and two are down close to ground. So we're going to do, we're going to fire the scope back up. We're going to do our key on self check and then fire it. Notice how we're already running smoother. And let's just 
pause this, shut this off, and go back. So we had our key on self check here. Key on, engine off. And you can see, I mean, we still got some noise in it, but see how much cleaner we are already? And then, let's skip ahead a couple and zoom back out. Let's find. That looks like a pretty good section there. Take a bite. And notice this, how we have our separate phases. And I'm not going to go crazy in depth into this because it is what it is. But the most important thing is compared to our previous capture, notice how nice, even, consistent steps. We don't have overly long or overly short steps or double steps in there. It's all nice, smooth, and uniform. So that's that hopefully you guys learned something hopefully that's helpful and hope you enjoyed it catch you guys next time